Yet another poll showing Tea Partiers are worried about their own economic interests. Yet more evidence Tea Partiers are willing to vote against those interests in favor of helping big oil. In our third story, as for the oil billionaire who claims to have nothing to do with the Tea Party, video of him doing something with the Tea Party. A new poll out from Bloomberg of Tea Party voters. Cut spending, lower taxes, half say they have no confidence they will have sufficient funds to live on in retirement. More than half believe their children will be worse off. That's where billionaire brothers Charles and David Koch come in. They run the oil and chemical conglomerate Koch Industries and as previously reported on this news hour, they have been quietly promoting their own business interests by investing in a right-wing ideological network of their own creation. It includes the AstroTurf group Americans for Prosperity, central in funding the Tea Party movement. Now, David Koch previously denied having anything to do with the Tea Party. To quote him, I've never been to a Tea Party event. No one representing the Tea Party has ever even approached me. So it'll be interesting to see how he explains this. Here is David Koch presiding over an Americans for Prosperity summit while various Tea Party leaders tell him all about their organizational success. We have led the largest Tea Party in the state. The largest tax day Tea Party in the nation on April 15th. Turns out Mr. Koch is pleased with the results he orchestrated for the organization he's never heard of. This is a phenomenal success in my judgment. 800,000 activists from nothing uh, five years ago. This is a remarkable uh, achievement. And we're being effective in so many different ways. So many ways, like leading the charge to repeal health care reform and continue the climate change denial crusade. That video comes from a new documentary, Astro Turf Wars, How Corporate America Fakes a Grassroots Revolution. And for its part, Coke Industries has also repeatedly denied any t ties to the Tea Party movement. No funding has been provided by Coke companies, the Coke Foundation, Charles Coke, or David Coke specifically to support the Tea Parties. This egregious falsehood juxtaposing neatly with new details of funding provided to Tea Party favorite and part-time Nazi reenactor Rich Ayat. Mr. Ayat's third quarter disclosures revealing an interesting donor list, including one Mr. John Boehner. The minority leader was curiously silent over Mr. Ayat's affiliation with the SS Panzer Division reenactment group Viking, even as his number two minority whip Eric Cantor condemned that association. Turns out Boehner's PAC donated $5,000 to the Ayat campaign, making Mr. Mr. Boehner, the only lawmaker to give Mr. Ayat money last quarter. In Mr. Boehner's defense, the money was given before the whole Nazi dress-up thing was reported, so he's going to take it back now, right? A Boehner spokesman told Politico Boehner would make no effort to recoup the money. And in California's 11th Congressional District, fading hope for the Democratic incumbent Jerry McNerney to recoup sipping, slipping poll numbers, he's fallen behind a Tea Party favorite who has previously advocated for the elimination of public schools, not just the Department of Education, all public schools. David Harmer, H-A-R-M-E-R, -E aptly named, his wife happens to be a substitute teacher, wants to return book learning back to, quote, the way things worked through the first century of American nationhood. You know, yellow fever, slavery, little education for women or minorities. Joining me now, contributing editor at Rolling Stone magazine and the author of the new book, Griftopia, Matt Taibbi. Good to see you, Matt. Good to see you, Keith. I'm assuming the David Koch tape and the hypocrisy therein is uh, no surprise to you. Uh, but besides the lie, why does it matter? Well, I, I think it does matter. I mean, when I go to Tea Party events, when I bring up these things, when I say, what about the Koch brothers, what about Dick Army, what about Karl Rove, mm -hmm. and these other interests who are supporting the Tea Party movement, I, I of, always get flat denials. You know, this is, this is a purely grassroots movement. Uh, it has nothing to do with that. So I think it will penetrate uh, some of the Tea Party. A few people will be persuaded by this. But on the other hand, you have to remember that for a lot of these people, you know, reality is kind of optional. Uh, a lot of these are the same people who still think that Saddam Hussein was behind 9-11, mm -hmm. and they're just going to believe what they want to believe, and I don't think it's going to have that huge an impact. Is that the, the, the missing thing that we're looking for constantly in trying to analyze this, having spent so much time at those Tea Party events? Do you have any insight into the fundamental disconnect that their voters, desperately fearful, as the new polling suggests, about their future, their kids' future, realistic problems, serious problems facing millions of Americans, and they are happily campaigning and almost adoring candidates who explicitly campaign on things that will totally undermine that future specifically for their group. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tragic, and I'm going to say something that's controversial for this show, which is that I don't totally root against the Tea Party. I mm -hmm. think America needs real challenges to authority, even if they're wrong-headed sometimes. Uh, you know, 
people in power need to not be so complacent. And I think it would be a good thing if this were a real outsider movement that really sought to reduce spending and, and did all those things. Mm -hmm. But the reality of, is that these people are just going to turn around and give their votes back to the same Republican Party that got them upset in the first place. And it's just going to turn into an endless cycle of uh, non-action, incompetence, despair, and more anger. It's, it's, it's a terrible situation. So you disagree with what is said on the show? You'll get out. Uh, no, no, just... <laughs> Obviously, your point is taken on the theoretical level. That's right. that. It's a good. It's a good thing at all times. But what, when it became a bad thing, was there a genesis moment? Is there a, 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 a plot line at which we can point to a date or an individual where somebody said, "We don't have to enslave these saps. If we sell this correctly, they will come into the cages by themselves." I, I think that moment came after the famous Rick Santelli rant. I think, you know, the Republican Party was really in disarray at that moment. They had just been beaten by Barack Obama. All the, the mainstream Republican candidates were really fleeing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then suddenly there was this explosion of real political energy that they saw out there on the Internet and on the streets. And it's true. You know, the, the Tea Party is a real grassroots movement in some respects. And I think there are people like Dick Armey and Karl Rove and, and the Koch brothers who saw this and said, we have to get a piece of this and, and corral it. And they've, they've done that. I mean, I think they've effectively appropriated the movement. I have to ask you about, about Mr. Boehner and, the, and, and Mr. Ayat in Ohio, and one can right. understand the regional sympathies there. But if that were a Democrat and Nancy Pelosi had contributed money to that Democrat or some other, he reenacts, I don't know, some other, some other war, pick your war, whatever it is, wouldn't the right be talking about this every day, every hour until Election Day? Sh sure. It'd be like the new Black Panther thing. It'd right. be on TV every day for five months. But, you know, the important thing about this is that it speaks to the... the the situation with Republican candidates in general. I mean, it's they're really just going after waiver wire pickups at this point. It's like the <laughs> Oakland Raiders of politics, and it just speaks to the kind of fringe candidates, like what Howard Feynman was, was right. saying before, the, the people in the periphery who are now at the forefront of the party. Zach Miller is going to be all over you for <laughs> waiver wire reference. That's an NFL, particularly a fantasy football reference. Right. Uh, Matt Taibbi, contributing editor at the Rolling Stone. Good to see you as always. Good to see Thank you, you Matt.